That was awesome. You know, one thing that's really funny, I have an, I have this button. It's kind of an oblivious button. I'm sitting there in this morning, and Susan said, okay, I want you to remember these Easter eggs. And they were sitting up here. I mean, how that didn't get my attention, I'll never know. <laughs> but uh, what this is all about for our big Easter event coming up, if anybody could bring in either these plastic eggs or candy to go in them, because we're going to have a huge Easter egg hunt, and we're going to have a collection thing back here in the back, uh, just like we did for the Halloween candy. You can get them at the dollar store. And you can get these at the dollar store. That's dollar a very good a thing. Dollar, dollar tree. And then, I'll bet they're a dollar, aren't they? They're the dollar tree. <laughs> Anywho, but all that to say, that that's one of my biggest weaknesses, and that and it drives Dion crazy. Because, I mean, it's like you get this whole list of things, and I'll hear about eight out of ten, but the other two are just gone. <laughs> so, anywho, that's what those are about. Oh, I enjoy it when we have good services. And I don't know about you guys, but it really touched my heart when everybody came up and prayed for Barbara. That That's what being a church is all about. Because it's just about caring about our folks. Because we're one big family here. And, and God's faithful to hear our prayers. And I can guarantee you, God enjoys it when he sees that happening in a service, seeing that we love each other. Well, for the last five weeks, we've been working our way through Matthew chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount. And so far, what we've studied, we've looked at the Beatitudes. We've learned how to be salt and light. We've looked at anger. We've looked at adultery and divorce. And we've looked at lying and getting even. And now we're going to move on to chapters 6 and 7. And chapter 6 in Matthew, it deals with giving to the needy, gives to prayer, fasting, storing up treasures on earth, and not worrying. And then chapter 7, it starts out with not judging others. And I would highly recommend that everybody read all those verses again, because they have, there's some incredible truth in there. However, one thing about it, from last May through about August, I covered every one of those things in the Sermon on the Mount, and so I don't want to just recycle the same sermon over and over and over again. And you know, that, That's one trick that pastors have, is they preach the same sermon once every two years, and they'll just change the, um, the ideas around a little bit, and you just sit there and you say, you know what, I think I've heard that before. And I don't want to get into that lazy habit. I want to keep it fresh and new. And like I've told you guys before, my goal is over the course of the next three years to hit every verse in the New Testament so that we can say, okay, yeah, we've, we've heard all of it. Now, the only part that I'm not going to go into, like, like I said before, is Revelation. And that's just being honest with you. I'm not smart enough to really understand what in the world is going on there. And the good part is, is that as believers, we're going to have all of eternity to ask John what in the world he was talking about in Revelations. <laughs> but every time I've looked at it, I mean, it just turns into, whoa, this is way over my head. So as Dion would say, whenever she's wanting to do transitions on things, she says, so <laughs> we're going to, pick, going to pick the story back up in the middle of chapter 7. And by the way, Every week when we read the scripture reading, if there's anybody here who would like to get involved in doing that, I'd love to have it to where we have somebody who'd like to stand up and read that scripture. It's not just about me being the only person up here talking. And if, if I had it my way, I'd love to have it to where everybody had a chance to participate in worship. So if that's something that God puts on your heart, let me know. Because I think that would be awesome if we could have different people reading the scripture. But we're going to read today from Matthew chapter 7. And if everybody could stand for the reading of God's word. And we're going to be in chapter, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks the door will be opened. 
Which one of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. This has always been one of my favorite passages in the Bible. And have you ever heard the saying that you have not because you ask not? This is where that idea comes from. And if we take a look at verse 7 here, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. The first thing I want you to notice about the way that that particular verse is written, it's written in a very active tense. Now, what do I mean by that? Jesus isn't saying here, I'll tell you what to do. So chill out on the couch, sit down, get back, get comfortable, and I'll bring it to you, and I'll bring you the right person to do all the work for you. That's not what he's saying here. He's saying exactly the opposite of that. He's saying that we need to ask for what we want. And let me give you an example from my life and my ministry. For the first year and a half of my ministry, I prayed, and it was a daily thing, that God would send me somebody to lead to Jesus. And after all, what kind of a pastor hasn't led anybody to Jesus? And the enemy just kept putting that one idea in my head over and over and over and over again. It seemed to be all I was hearing. And to be honest, I was beginning to wonder if I ever would lead anybody to Jesus. And the thought that just kept coming into mind is maybe I should just stick at what I'm good at and run sound. Because I've, I've ran sound for everybody over the years. That's where I was good at, but that's not what I've been called to do. Then back on October 24th of 2012, God answered my prayer out in Yuma, Arizona. And that day there was a Border Patrol agent who came to service for the first time and um, led him to Jesus. And I can tell you right where he was sitting that day. He was sitting in the center section of that church, and he was sitting there four rows from the front, and he was four seats in from the aisle. And what was amazing that day was that even though there was a crowd out there, he was the only person in that crowd that day for me. And God was telling me what what he needed to hear. And he had moved here from Michigan. He had no family here. He felt alone. Now, of course, I have no way of knowing that. I was just a fill-in pastor. I didn't know if he had somebody, if he'd been a part of that church forever. And what was amazing was that day the Holy Spirit, and it was the first time I'd experienced that as a, getting started as a preacher, he just basically told me to get rid of my outline and preach on the idea that once you know Christ is your Savior, you're not alone. And I ended up preaching a, ser a sermon to just one person that day. And it was an incredible thing. And you know, he, didn't, he didn't respond to the invitation at the end of the service. But um, I called the next day of the church to follow up to see, you know, how, how did it go? Is there anything I could do? And they said, it's funny. There was a guy in service today. And he was wondering if somebody could pray with him. And um, I ended up calling him. They told me what time he got off work. And I ended up calling him. I was out in Nielsen's frozen yogurt out in the parking lot and called him on his cell phone and, and, and led him to Jesus. But what's incredible about that is the incredible joy that when you've been praying for something and God answers it and he gives you that answer that you want, it's a feeling that if you haven't experienced it, there's nothing like it. And once you've experienced it, you want more. And it, it's hard to describe. Because you know, we, we have a lot of experiences in life that are good, bad, indifferent. 
but when you have that experience that you just go, whoa, especially when it's something that you know that God has called you to do, you want to be faithful to that, and you want to do it over and over and over again. And from there, I kept praying the standard prayers that everybody always prays, that, okay, God, bring me somebody else and give me the wisdom and discernment to know when, where, why, and how. And the only thing is that I was just praying that a general prayer, nothing specific. And it felt like my wheels were spinning. And even though I was preaching a bunch of different places, it just didn't feel like it was just quite getting there. And there was about six months went by and hadn't led anybody to Jesus during that period. And just sitting there going, okay, was this just a one-time thing or what? But when it comes to prayer, we have to learn how to take that extra leap of faith. And when there's the faith component involved there, we have to learn to ask for things that we know that we can't do on our own. Because if we're asking for something we can do on our own, well, how do you know that that's God? Where if we can take that extra step, we can know that it's 100% a God thing. And our faith has to be active. And our faith is evidenced by our actions. And faith requires risk. And faith is the key to having our prayers answered. And on May 1st last year, I prayed that God would send me five people every month to lead to Jesus for the rest of my life. And that was one of those crazy prayers. Because at that point, I've led a grand total of one person, and I, and I prayed, God, we bring five people a month for the rest of my life. And I can tell you, I, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit just tell me in just one simple word, okay. And that's what the asking part of the equation looks like. The second part of the equation is seeking. And once again, seeking is an active thing. And in a few weeks here with our little Easter egg hunt here at our community event, we're going to have kids who are out there looking to find eggs. And the ones who are actively seeking, the ones who are out there digging and going crazy trying to find them, they're going to get more eggs than their basket will hold. But the kids who are just sitting back on the wall and thinking, these eggs are just going to come to me. Guess what? Not going to happen. And that's the way it works with God. He wants to give it to us. But we've got to get in there and start digging around and find what it is that He has in store for us. And it's an active thing. And going back to my story, God said to me, okay. However, that's not the end of the story. Now, if I would have sat back and said, okay, God, where are those five people? Can you show me who they are? Can you put a little tag on them? Can you do whatever? No. And if, if God were speaking directly, I, I can guarantee he'd say, go out and look, and I'll show you where you need to go. Because we need to take that step to actively look for what he's put in our path. And he's faithful to give us whatever we ask for. We just have to do our part. And now for me, where did that, how did that seeking look for me? Where that looked for me is when Dion and I went on a cruise last year and starting a Bible study on the ship that actually ended up leading to Rose Marie, who the person who I was talking about who God gave healing to, um, ended up leading her to Jesus last summer and baptizing her at her church. And that all came from taking that leap of faith and starting a Bible study on a boat. And f for me, what it means is going to places like Bonsall Park and preaching to folks who were sitting there and you could tell their last Tuesday night they were getting into a fight and the police came. And But you know what? We need to go out there and reach people at their point of need. And that involves things like talking to people at our MASH when we're doing our food distribution out there and where Dave Mailer is the guy out there personally inviting everybody to church. And that's what it looks like when you're actively seeking, is taking that extra step. 
things like having a Bible study that we invite friends to, things like talking to visitors when they come in the door, things like inviting friends to a movie where they can come to know Jesus. That's what seeking looks like. And what's amazing is when I prayed that crazy prayer, God ended up giving me almost twice what I asked for. Since May 1st of last year, there are 94 people who I know of who have come to know Jesus. And that's incredible. I asked for 60 people a year, and it's going to be twice that number. God is faithful. We just have to take that first step. Now, am I saying any of this stuff to brag about myself? No, not at all. Because in the first 42 years of my life, I led a grand total of zero people to Jesus on my own power. But when you surrender everything to God and when you trust Him completely, that's when the amazing things happen. And it's not because suddenly we become really good at it. It's because of the fact that the Holy Spirit's doing the work. He's giving me what to say. He's giving you what to say when you witness to folks. And what's even better, the Holy Spirit is also leaning on the people and doing all the hard work in the background. So that's what's awesome. But the key to the whole thing is we have to be faithful to answer that call. And that's what Jesus is talking about in this pasture. Not pasture, passage. And I have pastor on the mind because I just been I wrote a big exegetical paper this week on um, Jesus being the good shepherd, so I've got pasture on the brain. But um, there are also going to be times when we try to reach out for Jesus that we're going to hit closed doors, and we're just going to have to sit there and just keep knocking. And the good news is that when it's in God's timing, He'll open every door that we need. The key is just persisting and waiting for that right time. And so if somebody, there's a difference between getting an answer of no and an answer of not now. No is no fun. But when you can see that not now, you can go, okay, it's going to happen. I just have to wait for God to take care of it and to make everything get into the right timing. There we go. And I, and I even recognize the ringtone there. <laughs> the key to the whole thing, though, is that we just have to be willing to jump in when God calls us to action. And last Wednesday night, 57 of us went to see God's Not Dead. And by the way, if you didn't hear it earlier in the service, we're going to see it again next Saturday morning over here. And so anybody who wants to come to that, invite your friends. We'd love to have a group. And... It's just an incredible movie, especially if you've got that person who you've heard that answer of not now. That's where God can use something like that to push them to that next step to make the decision to ask Christ into their heart. And when we were talking about going to see that movie for the whole week before we went, God was leaning on my heart to have an altar call in a theater. And I was totally excited about it. And I was looking forward to it. I'd prayed about it. I had no fear at all. Then about 30 minutes to go in the end of the movie, the enemy started attacking me big time. And he was just pointing out to me that, you know what, no one's going to be able to hear you. You're not going to be able to get over top of that sound system in there. You're going to have people laughing at you. You're going to get yourself kicked out of the theater. And with what happened with that Batman movie in Denver a year ago, there's a very real chance you're going to get arrested for, for disturbing the peace. And needless to say, for that last half an hour of that movie, I was a total nervous wreck. Then Isaiah came up to me. He came walking up behind me and he said, Pastor, you've got to pray with everybody at the end of the movie. And you know what? That was the word that I needed. Because I was sitting there where it's like, you know, it'd be easy to let this pitch just go by. Just sit here and talk to everybody afterwards. Oh, wasn't that a great movie? But knowing in my heart that I hadn't done what God had called me to do. But at that point when Isaiah talked to me, it just brought a clarity to me. And just, you know what? Do it. Go for it. And, and that's where 
One thing that we don't realize, when God puts that little thing on your heart to say to somebody, do it. Because of the fact that you never know when one simple little sentence is going to end up with 100 people stuck around in that theater to see what was going to happen. There were over 40 of our people who came forward to pray. And there were nine folks that we didn't know who came forward and asked Jesus to be their Savior. And that's incredible. And it's, that's how God works. And that's where teamwork comes in. Because I, to be 100%, I was sitting there wavering on that chicken out or do it. And it was just that one little nudge that I needed to take that extra step. And for me, standing up in a crowded movie theater and yelling, that's what asking, seeking, and knocking looks like for me. And for each of us, that's something different. It may not be standing up in a movie theater. It may be talking to that relative or your friend or wherever. But if God puts it on your heart, you need to be obedient to do it. And the hardest part is getting that first sentence out of your mouth. And if anybody heard on Wednesday night about the first sentence of, my, of that, my voice was all crackling up. And then all of a sudden, I got that confidence and the whole thing shifted. And I'm looking forward to doing this again next Saturday. And I don't know if anybody's going to come forward and pray. or, But I'm confident that if we're faithful to do what God's called us to do, He'll bring us the right people. And He's doing all the heavy lifting in our back, in the backyard, while we're not even looking and knowing what's happening. God's faithful. And one thing I'm going to do that's going to be a little bit different this time, this time I'm going to go with a fistful of flyers for a big Saturday community event so that it can be more than just a one-time shot with that personal invitation to come back to church. And one thing that I didn't even realize until talking to some folks this morning was that the four employees from the movie theater were sitting there listening to us. And that's where we can reach people who we don't even think about. It's just incredible to see how God can do things. And when you need courage to do those kind of things, pray for it. Those are the kind of prayers I guarantee you that God will answer for you. He'll give you courage when you ask and when He knows why you're asking for it. Let's look at verses 9 through 11. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you were evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? What I love about those verses, that's a pep talk that Jesus is giving us. He's urging us like with Peter, to get out of the boat. He's telling us that we need to come boldly to the throne of grace, that we need to ask, and that anything that we ask for, that He'll give it to us. And I'm urging you to have that kind of bold faith. And I'm urging you to ask for the things that are impossible on your own. And I'm urging you to dive in and do whatever it is that God has put on your heart that He's called you to do. And if you remember back when we were looking in the book of James where he says that faith without works is dead, that's what he was talking about. The way that we exercise our faith is putting it out there and seeing what we can do to help grow the kingdom. And God will give us anything that we ask for. Now, am I saying that we need to go out and ask for money and possessions and things? No. And those things He's not going to give us when we ask for it. And if you really think about it, when you pray for that kind of stuff, we don't have faith that He's going to do it. It's kind of like buying a lottery ticket. You just, you're just kind of just throwing it out there and hoping that something will happen. Those aren't the kind of prayers that God answers. When God answers the prayer is when you say, I need that courage to talk to this family member. I need the courage to be able to confront this situation. I need wisdom to know how to deal with this specific situation today. When you ask those kinds of prayers, God's faithful to answer them. And what's really cool is when you pray 
for God to use you to help grow His kingdom, the fruit from it is eternal. And you never know who those people are that you reach when they reach their family and they reach and they reach and they reach and you look 50 years down the line and you go, whoa, their life was headed this way and they did a big U-turn, went the other way and look at the incredible things that happened from it. And it could be from just a one or two minute thing. We just need to learn to be obedient to what God's asked us to do. And I don't know if you can tell, but this week there has been a big shift in the theme that we're going for here. For about the last two or three months here, we've been talking about cleaning up our lives. And we've been talking about getting ready for how God can use us. And now Jesus has taken that shift into it's time to get in the game. It's time to do what it is that he's called us to do. And next week, if you read forward in chapter 7, Jesus is going to tell us some things to look out for and to be careful about. And what he's going to do is he's going to remind us that we need to follow his teaching and to stay in the center of God's will and not to rely on our own strength and what we want. So that's what's coming for next week. And one thing that we're doing today that's different, and it's why I'm not wearing a tie and why I have a swimsuit on underneath here, is we're going to have baptism out here on the patio. And with that, anybody here who would like to make that public statement of their faith, we've got changes of clothes back in the office area. And if you know Christ is your Savior, we would love to be able to baptize you. And what it is, it's, it's a means of grace. And what I mean by that, it's a way of us publicly saying that we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior. That we're wanting to turn away from what our lives used to be. And we're wanting to say to our friends here that yes, I am a believer. And what baptism symbolizes when we go into the water before we go in there, we're dirty. And when we go in there, we surrender. When we come back up out of the water, we're forgiven. We're clean. And where that's awesome is when you have garbage from your past. And we all have garbage from our past. That's where we can say to God, I just want to leave all that garbage in the past. I don't want to think about it anymore. I want it gone. That's what baptism does. And a lot of times you think, I'm too old for this. I wasn't baptized until February of 2011. I, I was dedicated as a kid. But when you're dedicated as a kid, that's when somebody else is making the decision for you. That's your parents' faith. That's your grandparents' faith. When you're baptized as a teenager or as an adult, when you're capable of making that decision for yourself, that's your way of saying to God, I'm all in, I'm yours, and I don't care who knows it. And that's what baptism is all about. And so during the last set of songs here, anybody who's interested in that, we've got clothes back in the back here. Uh, if you just come on back, we'll get you something to wear. And we're going to have the service outside immediately following the last three worship songs. And so I, I just ask everybody to stick around and to encourage the people who are taking that leap of faith today. But if I were to summarize what we're looking at here today as a theme, we need to go all in for God. We need to surrender to His will. And when we do, He's going to do amazing things in our lives. It's just we have to take that first step of faithfulness and obedience. And a lot of times that can be done with something like, well, number one, the first step is praying to know Christ is your Lord and Savior. That's the biggie, to know that you've been forgiven. 
and a way of just sealing the deal, as it were, would be to be baptized and just put your past in the past and move forward. And I'd encourage you, if you have that opportunity to be able to share your faith with somebody, if God's leaning on you to talk to somebody, go for it and watch how He'll give you the strength to do it. And once you've done it, you're going to want more. And it's an incredible thing to know that you're in the center of God's will and that you know that He's using you to help grow His kingdom. But let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank You for all the blessings that You're pouring out. And Father God, if there's somebody here today who's been sitting on the fence, I pray that You would just give them the encouragement and the strength to be able to move forward, to be able to share their faith with somebody, to be able to answer the call, whatever that may be, that You've put onto their lives. And Father God, if there's somebody here today who's debating, should I get baptized or should I not? Or if, if there's anybody that you're leaning on their heart, I just pray that you would give them the confidence to take that step forward. And I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for all the incredible things that I've seen happening. And Father God, I want to thank you in advance for bringing healing to Barbara. I know it's going to happen. And that's what faith is all about. And for everybody else here who's prayed for healing, I just pray that they would be able to take that leap of faith and trust you and know that you are God and that you're capable of all things. We just thank you and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen.